Uh, I'm Richard Amper. I'm executive director of the Long Island Pine Barren Society. Um, we've had a, a very good relationship with this commission. Um, we were a party to um, the creation of the Pine Barrens Protection Act, and that's an excellent record. Um, we want to keep it that way. Um, it has been, however, uh, nearly five years that the New York State Pine Barrens Commission has been aware of the biggest and baddest development project targeted for the Southampton Pine Barrens, a state-designated special groundwater protection area and a critical environmental area. So today we're calling on the Pine Barrens Commission to stop the endless stream of requests for information, more than 10 so far, from the applicant and declare an assertion of jurisdiction on the part of the Pine Barrens Commission. This nearly requires a review of the project, which may or may not lead to approval of what we consider a very dreadful project. I have heard people say, well, let's write another letter. Well, after not having gotten a response to 10, I'm not optimistic that that will change anything. So I'm asking this commission right now to make this uh, a ne the priority for review by this commission. The, uh, there are seven major reasons for the commission to act. Uh, ten letters to the town applicant and consultants on this matter from the commission have still not produced a responsive reply. Why do we believe in 11th Wood? This project was defeated by the town board in Southampton and cannot be legally reviewed by the town planning board. They're trying, but we don't think that's a legal review. Doesn't conform to the zoning. Let's set it aside. Let's leave the Southampton end of it alone. We've gone through it. We've already had that project disapproved there. The people who are advising, who are advising the planning board have suggested that the most important thing that can be done right now is to have the Pine Barrens Commission review this, we call it the biggest, the baddest product, project that has been uh, presented to the Pine Barrens Commission and to Long Island in the past 20 years. A review of the project will establish the environmental impacts of the mega project. Since the applicant for the project has refused to address the Pine Barrens Commission, the commission must call up the project for review. It's not an option, it's a requirement of the law. We demand the commission to do its job regardless of whether or not Supervisor Schneiderman wants it. He's not a supervisor today. This board is comprised of representatives from the state and from the county and the three town supervisors. They are commissioners now and they have for 25 years been able to set aside what was going on at home or any selfish interest and we have every confidence that that can happen here. I think uh, 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 Commissioner uh, Schneiderman and all of you can look and say, this is what the law requires, let's do it, let's get an honest opinion from the commission consistent with state law, and I am optimistic that this will happen, but I don't want to wait any longer. It's taken close to five years. Commission Chairman Gallagher, you're the head of the commission now. It's time for you and your fellow commissioners to act to protect our water and this natural treasure. The Pine Barrens Act and its legislative creators have made clear the role of the commission must play in reviewing proposals targeted for the source of Long Island's purest water. Purest water is what it's all about. It's all enumerated. It's in packets that we have provided to you as to what the authority of this group is and what the questions are that should be asked and answered. The executive director of this organization has written to the applicant, to the town, and, and made a list of this is what we need to know to know whether this project is good or bad, right or wrong, conforms to the law or doesn't. Let's all get together on this one and do it. Uh, my name is Bob DeLuca, and I serve as president of the group for the East End. Uh, along with Mr. Ramper, I'm a member of the Central Pine Barrens Advisory Committee, and we've been stakeholders since the advent of the program and the legislation. And I thank you all for your service uh, in the good works that are required uh, to make that law work. The reason when the law was written, there was the assertion of jurisdiction provision put in it, was to allow the commission of its own accord to basically say there are certain projects that are important enough of public interest enough and maybe largest largest enough in terms of what we consider to be regional in terms of the pine barren that we should be able to have a go at it and take a look and even if you decided not to you would need the information in the first place to determine whether you could or couldn't 
So I'm here to ask you to assert that jurisdiction to get the information that you needed back as far as 2013 and to render an opinion that can help not only those of us in the community looking at this at the town level, but also the planning board members who I think are going to be asking you the same question in a few weeks when they have their final recommendations from their consultants. And with that, I just want to thank you very much for your time and all of your good work. And uh, I hope that you can see your way here to a certain jurisdiction on this project. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commission. Uh, William Kerr and Deuce Claw. I live adjacent to the property, and I've been against this project from day one. I think I'm here today to ask you to assert your authority and, and take control of this project. I think that you have to look at it in light of what's happening today. The Bresky Airport, super fun site. Damascus Road, 300, 400 feet from where they plan to build, start the building of this, of this development, will be a super fun site. Um, the Hampton Bay's Fire Department, super fun site. PFOAs, or whatever they're called, carcinogenic chemicals, are, um, are, are leaching into the water, um, and it's impacting potentially the health of the town of Southampton, the future of Southampton. I think it's incumbent upon you to, to take control here. The, the use or the, the situation that people say that uh, this, is, uh, this, can be, this goes back 20 years in terms of um, what was planned and what can be done on the property, that doesn't come into light. That's a business plan that was written. The comprehensive plan is 20 years old. Nobody would build a business or do a business with a plan that's that old. It has to be revised. It has to be looked at today in terms of what's happening as we speak in this property, and it should not be allowed to be built. Thank you. I'm Andrea Spilka. I'm president of the Southampton Town Civic Coalition. But I wrote to you for the first time to the commission in 2015 asking you to review the original version of the project, The Hills. At that time, I reminded you that a much smaller development in the compatible growth area proposed in Eastport had approximately eight hearings from 2009 to 2012. I testified in July of 16 in Riverhead, er again urging the commission to review the project. I'm here one more time um, on behalf of all of these organizations, their members, and uh, the majority, I would think, of the citizens of Southampton, and as you can tell, um, throughout the region, urging you one more time to assert your jurisdiction and review what is now called the Lewis Road PRD. Given its size and location and their need to remove 250,000 yards of soil to create the golf course, this is the poster child for a development that should be reviewed by the commission. Each of you wear another hat, whether state, county, or town, and at each level of government, we've heard that the quality of our drinking and surface waters is your highest priority. Add to that the millions, and in some estimates now, billions of dollars that are needed to undo the damage to protect our drinking and surface waters. For that reason, with all the concerns about water quality, impact of pesticides and fertilizers, a thorough re review of this project with more than 118 homes, a golf course, and a clubhouse, and an underground parking lot above our aquifer on land that feeds into already impaired Weesaw Creek is essential. It's important to note, as uh, Bill Kearns mentioned, that the site of the proposed development is now surrounded by pollution and uh, pollution as well as closed drinking wells. Hampton Bay's Fire Department Superfund site, Damascus Road con contamination proposed as a Superfund site in Southampton Town. Gabreski Airport, Superfund site. The community counts on the Pine Barrens Commission to take an unbiased view of all large-scale projects. We depend on you to protect the integrity of the region and to provide oversight to any proposed development in this valuable environmental resource that is so important to our water quality and our quality of life. For a project of this size and intensity in an already deteriorating watershed, the Commission has the duty and the responsibility to review this project at the earliest possible moment. It's time. It's truly time and the community is counting on you. Thank you very much. Perhaps I'm, I'm still optimistic enough to believe that 
sending another letter to my friends at the town of Southampton will get us a response and the information that the commission needs to help us determine the conformance to the Pine Barrens guidelines and standards. So I have, we uh, have drafted another letter. It is in front of the commission members. Um, I will put forward a motion and I believe there might be comments on the motion. Um, still reading it. You're That's still fine. reading it. I just got it today. and I'm I listening. know. In fairness, you did just get it today. And I'm trying to listen to the speakers. I know. And, and it is, it it's is, a detailed letter yeah. that you know, requires some It, it is substantively, substantively similar to the letter we sent a year ago. Okay. Um, so I... I, I think we have I, to do it for the well, do you feel that there are things in the letter that the town could not respond to, and if you felt there were inaccuracies, you you have you could correct it in your response? I need some time to review the letter. Okay, okay. I just listened to the speakers yep. to the best of my ability. Just before they started speaking, you gave me the letter. It's very detailed. It references a lot of sections, sections of, of the law, law, and it's unfair to ask me to vote on it immediately after you hand it to me. All right, so are, would you like to, are you making a different motion? Yeah, uh, to, what's, what's our next meeting? April 10th, I want to say. That's correct. That's Brooke Haven Town Hall. Yeah, I think that's, that would be fine. To, I'd be prepared to vote on it, certainly by then. To vote on sending the planning board a letter requesting information. I just want to be clear. Yes. Or, you know, or give give me an hour to review it. That might be fine too. So, revisit later in the meeting, or what's your? Uh, you need time to look at it. Absolutely. How much time do you? Well, the next meeting will be fine. You know, certainly, the town planning board is aware that. The application must conform to the compatible growth area standards of the Pine Barrens Act. This is not, it won't be news to the planning board. Would right. Kyle, can you weigh in on that? Absolutely. It's in the compatible growth area. The, the standards in the, as pursuant to the plan, have been incorporated into our code. Any development application within that compatible growth area, the planning board has to make findings as it relates to those standards that were incorporated into the code consistent with what was uh, adopted in the plan. Yeah. I think we'll you'll see if you go through it kind of very specific. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah, see what guidelines. just, uh, I mean, I know that Jay said yeah. he wanted to take a look at it. I was yeah. just wondering if there's. We could certainly. Uh, preliminary. preliminary review, I haven't even deemed it complete. So the application in front of the planning board has not been deemed complete yet either. So we have some time. There's no particular rush since they don't even they haven't even received a formal application, right? No, they have a formal well, application. What stage? What stage is it? They're at? deeming it complete and doing the CEQA review that need that they need to do in order to deem the application complete. They have a preliminary application. It's preliminary. It's not a final. And, and before you deem an application complete, you need to complete the CEQA. And so they're in the process of completing that secret, and they've hired an outside consultant to assist in doing that. In completing secret, and if it's determined that it's substantively similar, then secret would have already been coordinated, and there would not be new coordination, correct? Correct. That's one of the things you're waiting on. Unless there's a supplemental report. In That's which correct. case, the commission has already asserted jurisdiction over a substantively similar project. Yes. Different application. Different application. But That's if your question. consultant That's comes back. Right. Question for the chair. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the question, and this is something I don't know that we'll have an answer on until their the town's <laughs> consultant determines seekers. If their seeker, if their consultant determines that it's a substantively similar project such that seeker coordination is already deemed complete through the previous process. What does that mean in terms of the commission having to assert if, it, if we already asserted jurisdiction over a 
substantively similar project. I think the application is different, right? So the, the application, the original application to the town was denied. This is my understanding. So it was denied. They didn't get their supermajority at the mm -hmm. town board. Then they came back with a new application. My understanding is that their consultant is looking at the prior secret process to see what pieces of that package of information can be used again, or does this project require an additional review because of new elements in the project? That's my understanding of what the consultant is doing. The application has not been submitted to the commission in either flavor, so the commission in its couldn't assert, as Dick talked about, and all those things that we've heard today, but there isn't a application for the commission to review, and Seeker hasn't been coordinated with the commission. On the current On the current, or the, yeah. And what would the timing of this letter mean if it was to go out a month later? The letter is really, as everyone has mentioned, the letter says what the letter last year said. You know? <laughs> the plan is, um, it asks for additional information. It says make sure you're aware of the elements that have to com the project has to comply with. It sets forth the commission's potential jurisdiction. And it's just <coughs> making sure the town is reviewing those things that Kyle said the town's looking at. It's another attempt to get information. And again, it's because the letter was mailed a year ago, there's been no response. It's, the commission is still here, and the commission still may have jurisdiction over this project. So why wouldn't this letter be pertinent to coming in before determining secret, if, if that's in fact what you're doing over the next month? That's correct. What's that? If you're, if you're determining se your secret over the next month, if the commission wanted to, to raise these concerns, wouldn't these concerns want, we would like to raise them before that determination is made, correct? We just need to determine, we just received the letter, and if we, uh, have an opportunity to review the accuracy of the contents of the letter. No, That's I it. no, no, I agree with you. But but so then we can wait a week and a month and then send out send out the letter. Because we just got the letter. They're asking us to the question. So I guess the question is: Is the town moving forward on the application, or will the town be holding off on the on any process with the application until this letter is sent out by the commission, but prior to determining secret on the on the project? Right. The concern is that if your consultant comes back and says, oh, Seeker was already, you know, completely coordinated under the previous process and the substantive differences are, <coughs> are not such that you would have to coordinate again, we want to make sure that the commission's on record with this application, this process, as stating that here are the things that we need information on. So John, if, yeah. Can you advise the commission on what applications and actions are required to be reviewed by this commission? Sure. So the we've had this, you know, this is a continuing conversation. I say it every time I get the question. Um, the commission has jurisdiction over certain projects in the pine barrens. It has jurisdiction and two types of jurisdiction. It has automatic jurisdiction, we'll call it, and it has discretionary jurisdiction. The automatic jurisdictions are as follows. If a project is, and again, this is only relevant to CR, um, CGA projects, in the core, it's automatic. <clears throat> in a CGA project, if an applicant, an applicant has the right to go to a town first, if that project as proposed by the applicant conforms to the standards, the commission doesn't have automatic jurisdiction. That's it's determined by who? By the, the towns make that determination. Now that has been, in the law, and it's in the act. It's in the act, it's in the plan that's been in place for since 1995. The commission has jurisdiction over projects that involve critical resource areas. If a project involves a critical, if development is proposed in a critical resource area, the commission has automatic jurisdiction. If a project in a CGA is a development of regional significance as defined in the plan, Commission has automatic jurisdiction. You know, the, the letter nowhere says, um, Jay, that the Commission's asserting jurisdiction. It's saying, we need this information. 
I think it is making clear in the letter that the commission feels like it has. I thought this uh, John just said that the letter, the letter said that yeah. the commission may exert jurisdiction. I'm looking for it's not, well, saying, again, it's it not saying it does. It it's has saying has it that. may. I yeah. think if you read the first yeah. paragraph, the first Which paragraph here, Which then it hasn't yet. It felt appropriate to provide the following comments. So it's not yeah. saying one thing or another. It just it just seems to be these are the comments, without saying jurisdiction. Um, so, given the fact that I don't, I don't know that everyone who's here is going to stick around to the end. I normally would wait and have public comments, but I know there's a lot of interest in this, so I'd like to um, allow if there's any additional thoughts before people have to go away. We, yeah, because I do appreciate folks taking time out of their busy days to to be here. I think the biggest issue is that the commission doesn't hear back. So whether you send this letter or last year's letter or the letter from 2013 or 2014 or 2015, the commission staff doesn't know. And the commission staff keeps asking because I think it feels the information is important to make a determination that can help you then make an informed decision. So whatever it looks like, okay, whoever signs it, and yes, I think you should be able to read it before you have to send it. But I think the bottom line is Everybody sitting here is scratching their head saying, how could this be so difficult, right? You've got a major development project, never the likes of which have not been seen in this particular area, sitting smack in the middle of the Pine Barrens. You are the Pine Barrens Commission. Staff from the town is saying, it's going to conform to everything. Great. Why not just look at it? Why not have it come in here, assert jurisdiction, and this is why, by the way, asking, to, asking you to assert jurisdiction is to use your discretion to assert jurisdiction so we can get out of this loop of 100 letters that come to the town and don't get responded to. If you just assert jurisdiction, you're gonna get a copy of whatever it is the town has. And by the way, getting a copy of what the town has after they do SECRA doesn't make any sense. Because the purpose of SECRA is to get everybody's information at the earliest stage in the application, and if there is something that you all have to offer to that planning board, God knows they should get it before they decide there isn't an environmental impact, or there is some kind of, whatever it is, why wouldn't they have that? And you may have an outdated mode where you have to have the secret done before you deem the application complete. The town has hired full-time consultants to work on this application. You have enough of an application somewhere in front of the planning board to send to the staff at the commission for it to render an informed judgment about whether or not you all should take ownership of that. And even if it doesn't, the significance of the project leads me to believe that you should assert your, your ability to have that jurisdiction anyway. The big project it's in the Pine Barrens. Everybody's concerned about water. It leads to Wee Creek, which is polluted. People are just concerned about it. And that's what you're here for. So thank you for taking the time. So why don't, why don't we agree to, well, are they, do you know, has the planning board responded to the letter that was sent a year ago? So if there's if there's if there's different no. language we should put in the cover letter, um, Kyle, to make it clear that we actually are looking for a response or an appointed yeah, Why don't we do that? Send that a letter saying we sent you a letter a year ago. We haven't heard from you. We're looking for a response at your earliest convenience to this letter, and then next month we'll send them a second letter. I mean, at least just just because I, I think may, and may, and maybe the commission's language has been unclear on on the fact that we're actually awaiting a response, so we could make that more clear in the cover letter. That. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. If the if the new letter is the same as the old letter, there's really no harm in sending the old letter, saying we sent you this a year ago. A year ago, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, I'm, we'll I'm, fine, I'm fine with that. Yeah. And that's that's making this yeah, response in April, and we would, you know, like them to at least address the letter prior to 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 doing that, or respond to the letter prior to do. I think we could give a and that would give time frame. That would give us, you know, Kyle and, and I a month to take a look at this letter and make any changes we thought were were necessary. Well, well you get suggestions. Right. Suggestions, right. I mean, I think that we all know the other letter that went out. We could make it clear in the cover letter that we are actually looking for a response on how these standards and guidelines are going to be met in the new project as to the best of the understanding of the town and planning board at this time. Right. Um, to share that information with the commission. 
Yeah. And I might point out too, you know, I did get the agenda for today's meeting. This was not on. You're right, but that's why I called you. This was added on, yes. You, yes, it was a late You started. called me and said that you wanted to bring this on, but you didn't provide me with a copy of the actual letter till today. Correct. You are correct. Very curious. I think, I think this conversation is running towards us. Okay. I would move on to your regular agenda and go from there. But are we going to vote to send the old letter? I mean, we I still need to vote to. What yeah. I've heard, you know, you know the, the will of the commission is to take the old letter, add a cover letter showing how this project performs, and send it. Right. So correct? we need a motion for that. And, oh, and to request a response, because as Kyle yes. said, there was no request for any motion reply. from Dorian Dell. Right. And please respond, providing the information. Yes. Can it be respond? Tell them just tonight. That's yeah. all. The motion was made by Mr. Dale. Yes. I'll second the motion. Great. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 